Now the third international conference on financing for development will take place July 13 to the 16th in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Stakeholders will discuss how to secure funding for sustainable development goals expected to be adopted by the United Nations in September. Among the attendees will be Fausin Wabwire, Senior Foreign Assistance Policy Analyst at the Bread for the World Institute. Ms. Wabwire, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you, Vincent. Now, we have mentioned that a little bit, but uh, just give us a sense of the objective of this uh, conference in Addis Ababa. So the third International Financing uh, for Development Conference aims to achieve an agreed intergovernmental um, support for the upcoming Sustainable Development Goals. It's essentially about determining how to finance the next global development agenda starting this year yeah. until 2030. Yeah, so someone will want to know who else is going to be there uh, besides you. Well, there will be myself, <laughs> and then there will be, um, it's actually a pretty high level um, representation um, from heads of state and government to ministers of finance and foreign affairs. The business community is a big part of this agenda as well as civil society. Yeah, you know, when many people in Africa hear about uh, raising uh, finance, they think of the IMF, the World Bank, uh, donors in the West. Uh, who, else, who are you actually talking about here when you think about uh, raising funds? So what's interesting about the, the point of development that we are at right now is, is shifting away from externally driven um, resources yes. of, for development purposes to include domestically raised revenues, to include private financial flows, which by the way constitute a big part of the development um, uh, budget today. And so all of these different sources of financing are going to come together to hopefully um, create a way that enables the global community to achieve the ambitious goals that we have set ourselves mm -hmm. towards. But again, you're looking at a continent that has about 54 countries with the different levels of uh, economic development. In terms of capacity, uh, is this something that is really viable in every country across the continent? I think first of all, I'll just say that country-led development. Yeah. Sustainable development will not happen unless countries themselves are able to drive that development. Yeah. Which is why I think strengthening the institutions at the local level, both the public sector and private sector, civil society, citizens to engage collectively to um, drive their own development agenda. Bread for the World Institute is just about to publish a paper about strengthening local capacity and the fact that to achieve development outcomes uh, that are sustainable, it begins at the local yeah. level. So, but again, this is first recognizing what is the problem that you have, uh, the level of poverty in your country, what is the potential you have to deal with that poverty locally and what are the resources you possess. So do you get the sense that uh, uh, those policymakers, those individual nations are kind of getting a grip on this issue, making that assessment and kind of determining to use their own resources to do that? Or is this what you want to persuade them to do? Actually, there's already a lot of momentum on that, at least from the continent. I know there's the common African position, which exactly speaks on that. The recognition that there is big opportunity for African countries to strengthen their own institutions so that they can better generate their revenues in addition to support that they will need from, from development partners. And the common African position actually stipulates that the role of official development assistance, which by the way, many countries still need, the role of the private sector, and then philanthropies. There's a lot of resources there, but I don't think that they're being channeled or harnessed to the level that they should be. Uh, very quickly, uh, where are we today in terms of uh, fighting poverty? There is that goal of 2030, eliminating poverty. How realistic? You know, from the progress that we've seen over the last 15 years with the Minelem Development Goals, goal setting clearly shows that it pays. The world has been able to track some of these goals. The goal of end, uh, reducing poverty in half was actually achieved in 2010. That's 10 years ahead of its target in 20, of the year 2015. The hunger goal has made tremendous progress. It's complicated, but it's within reach, which is why the new set of goals, the Sustainable Development Goals, then gives us the opportunity to finish the unfinished agenda of the MDGs, mm -hmm. if you will. Very quickly, do, do, are there like very short-term assessment of uh, how 
quickly or how far are we in achieving those goals? In so different countries have performed different, as you can imagine. The capacities that you talked about present uh, a mixed picture. Yeah. Uh, some countries are far along on other goals than others are. The biggest challenge to date is in fragile states. And we are seeing a massive increase on, on fragility. We have the yeah. largest yeah. refugee number to date. Okay. So fragile states need specialized attention. And you'll come to tell us a little more about that when you come back from Absolutely. that country. Absolutely. Thank you. Faustin, thank you very much for joining it. us today. Faustin Obiri is a senior foreign assistance policy analyst at the Bread for the World Institute.